Hey there everyone and welcome back to a brand new indie game devlog. It's been another week and I've been able to add in some really cool things into the game that I'm going to be showing you guys today. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now I started off this week not actually knowing what I wanted to work on in the game so I spent a while working up a little kind of notepad on what I actually should get implemented in the game and what my main priority should be. So as it's been a pretty time busy week, I haven't actually been able to add in a huge amount into the game but I do have a couple of cool things that I should be able to show you this devlog that I have managed to get into the game. Now the first thing I added into the game was I actually added in a couple of new sprites. So we have a couple of new potion sprites and we actually have a new chest sprite. Now the new potion sprites are yellow and cyan and I don't actually know what they're going to do yet in the game but it's just good to stockpile up these sprites so I'll be able to implement them later on in the game. I also managed to implement another chest sprite this week and it is a full silver one. So my idea is that this is actually going to drop some higher tier rewards for the player than just the brown and blue ones so it's actually going to be a bit rare to find in and around the game. I do also have the idea of potentially adding in a full gold one which will actually give a really really rare drop or maybe just making a bigger chest that actually gives the player a new weapon or potentially a new item which could help them throughout the game. Now another small thing I added into the game is I actually added in a couple of new flowers so there's an orange flower and a kind of darker purple flower so just to make the environment look a little bit nicer but I actually need to add these to the tile set and have them in the game so they're in the environment. But another really cool thing that I achieved art-wise this week is that I actually took the boxes, the kind of crates, and I made a kind of darker version of them so they're in the background. So these ones you're not actually going to collide with, it's just a kind of visual effect so the player is moving in front of them, whereas the ones in front you can actually jump on top of. So it'd be cool to create some stacks of crates in the background just to make the environment look a little bit nicer. Now I'm very happy with what I've managed to add into the game art-wise, but let's move on to another thing that I've been able to achieve this week. Now using the system that I implemented which was the kind of indicator system of being able to drop the guns when you press G, I actually decided that I also wanted to show a kind of pickup notification of when you pick up gold and it's going to show the player how much gold they've picked up and how much is going to be added. Now I don't actually have anything in the game yet displaying the player's total gold but it was good to have this just to let the player know how much they've actually received from picking up the gold. Now I know that I actually only have the one coin and then the three coins so obviously if you saw that you'd be thinking that you'd either be picking up three coins or one coins but I was potentially thinking that I might actually just add it as a varying number either between one to five uh, for all the coins. But of course let me know what you think down in the description because I don't want to make it a little bit confusing for the player in case they actually think that they're going to get 3 and instead they get 5 or they think that they're going to get 1 and they actually get 2. But these kind of little niche things that I'm adding to the game is just making it a little bit more easy for the player to play the game and also understand. But as I discussed in the previous episode of the devlog I actually am going to add in a currency system into the game and potentially add in a shop. I think that with the shop I'm actually not going to make it too complex, I'm going to have like maybe a row of 5 items that you can buy from a shopkeeper in and around the world. Because like I said in the previous episode, I don't actually want to make the game too confusing to where people actually lose track of what they're doing in the game and just end up stockpiling all these items which are actually useless. Now as for items, I'm probably just going to add in a couple of items that you can equip onto the player which is going to change their stats or the variables that I have assigned to them. And of course you're probably going to be able to buy more potions from the shopkeeper if you haven't actually been able to pick up too many in the world if the drops are rare or you only find a couple. But for that let me know what you think if that's a good idea because I think a couple of you know trinkets or items that change the player's gameplay of the game might actually make it a little bit more interesting and they'll actually have items to work towards. But with this I was thinking that I might actually start working on a log book that you might be able to go through on the main menu and then see all the items in the game and there's going to be a description of what they all do so the player knows. But I guess that's kind of just the more collectible side of the game. I'm, you know, personally a player, when I play games, I try to get the collectibles and try and get the rarest items, or maybe try and get something that's a little bit more OP than the other weapons in the game. So that's, the, uh, you know, my main inspirations for putting it in. But of course, to play with this idea, I might actually have to add in a shopkeeper so you'll be able just to buy a couple of test items and use them. So that's probably what I'm going to go and achieve in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. <laughs> Now one of the main things I wanted to look at this week was actually implementing a health system for the player because of course this is a staple thing that you need in your game and I currently didn't actually have a health system. If you fell off the map you just infinitely fell and you wouldn't actually die. Now I'm still yet to implement the health system so you actually show that you're losing HP or if you're actually gaining HP but I have managed to actually make a sprite for it and I think it is very good and fitting for the game. Now I didn't want to go too complex and have all these percentages or have kind of, you know, like all these bars that could go up and down for the player health. So I ended up settling for what there is in all the classic games. So you only have three heart containers and there's a half heart value in each of them. 
So with this, that means that, you know, if you get hit by something that's not as weak, you're actually going to take half a heart. But if I want to have a boss maybe do like a whole heart damage, I'm going to be able to put that into the game. But as for the spriting, I just kept it really simple, kept it similar to how the rest of my game is sprited so that it's going to be looking nice and consistent. But another thing that I actually wanted to implement as well as implementing the health system is to have a shield system. So one game that I kind of took inspiration for this from is from Enter the Gungeon, where Enter the Gungeon actually does have a kind of shield system where you can gain a shield and then also take one off. But I've only limited the slots for the shield up to two slots, so you're going to be able to get one shield and then two shields, but no more, because I feel that if I put in too many into the game, it would make it too easy to stay alive. Which is where the game will actually lose its fun, because if you can permanently stay alive, then what's the point in playing the game? There's no actual challenge of you being able to die or actually fighting enemies. But with that being added in, it means that I can actually start to implement the blue potion actually being able to give you a shield. So I think I'm going to use that potion to give you one shield slot every time you pick it up. So that means that I should be able to finally get my first potion implemented into the game. This also means that I'll actually be able to implement the red potion as well, so that's probably just going to give you, I think it might give you a full heart container, I don't actually know if I'm going to do a half heart or a full heart for that, but I might actually make a different drop just to get half hearts in the containers. Now, one more thing that I did actually show you guys in a previous episode, but I want to go back and readdress, is I have these little kind of small buffs that I've sprayed. So you can see that we have the kind of poison symbol, or the shield, and then the heart, or the speed up. So I was thinking that I'm actually going to make the green potion a kind of speed boost, but I might actually put that small symbol underneath the heart so it kind of looks like a buff. So if you guys have ever played World of Warcraft, as you, you know, when you get a buff, it actually shows underneath your health that you have a buff or a debuff. So I think I'm actually going to kind of take inspiration from that and add that to my game. So it would actually make it easier for the player when you can just have a quick glance at the HUD to see why you've sped up because you actually have a speed buff enabled. But as always, let me know what you think in the comments. I think that this health system and shield system is going to work out quite well for the game, for now at least, but I will actually be able to revisit it in the future if I need to change it up. But yeah, that is everything that I've actually been able to achieve this week. It has been a pretty busy week, so I'm sorry I haven't been able to get a lot of progress on the game, but hopefully the following devlogs will have you know a lot more progress in it for me to show you. But I also just want to give a massive thank you to you guys. We have had an absolutely crazy month since I came back to YouTube. I've nearly gained 200 subscribers, over 5,000 views, and you know, nearly like 300 hours in watch time, which is absolutely mental. But yeah, thank you so much for watching today's video. As always, if you enjoyed, make sure to go and leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to go and subscribe. And of course, check out my Patreon, which is linked down in the description. And also make sure to join the Discord. We have some pretty cool people on the Discord that you can come and meet. And they also share an interest in the channel or in my game.